in the last six six years. I have my office on board. I'm fully nomadic. I run three businesses. And I've been watching these laws as they've been developing with absolute horror from the European perspective. The gypsies and the travellers are looked down on in Britain like no other country in Europe. I've been to the gypsy slums and ghettos of Poprat, Slovakia. I've been to the slums, the Mumbai and Mombasa style slums of Rome. I've been to gypsy encampments where you wouldn't let your dog live. And I stand strong with the Roma and with the Romani for better equal human rights for all of them. So it's about this law, but it's about improving and providing better facilities for all of us as one tribe. Campaigning for, for, for rights for travellers 20 years ago, the problem was we didn't have the numbers. Today, we're starting to build a new approach to this where we stand equal. And we're starting with this to have the numbers. So it's really precious that you're here today. The Brexit scam, the COVID scam, the hostile environment and a divided nation are all political devices deployed by the Tories to instill fear into the nation and control its people while they rob the nation blind of all its assets. Fear of Europe, fear of travel, fear of death itself. And for decade upon decade, fear of gypsies and travellers. We the people here today unite in rejecting this Tory hate in our unison by fully accepting every gypsy and traveller alongside all other protest groups here to positively support us. And guess what? Our unison is strong. And they don't like it! Welcome to a new, all-inclusive Travel of Britain. ...and travel cultures, so we need to be really clear about what this is. This is a racist, this is an unjust, and this is a bill that needs to be resisted by every single person who calls themselves anti-racist. anti-gypsy rumour and traveller racism is so prevalent and it's on the rise. It is broadcast on primetime television, it is propagated by politicians right at the very top of our political system and far too often it goes simply unchallenged. People do not blink an eye. And when I was first elected, one of the very first debates I attended was one about Roman traveller communities. I had very low expectations going in, like many debates in Parliament, but I was really shocked by what I heard. Members of Parliament, Conservative MPs, spoke about travellers being a problem that needed to be tackled. And this language that uses dehumanising rhetoric is something that is so common. Language like parasites need to be addressed. All of these things are truly sickening and everyone needs to be calling it out because also it reminded me of something it reminded me of how politicians also talk about my community it reminded me about how muslims are demonized uh -huh. just how refugees and migrants are demonized just how disabled people are demonized just how black people are just uh, demonized jewish people we're all targeted and we're all scapegoated yeah. we're blamed for problems that are of our making yeah. and we're blamed by, we're blamed because of problems created by MPs and politicians in that building across the road. come to stand in solidarity with all of you who are standing up for your rights. We will not allow politicians over in that building to take away our civil rights. And we must tell them that and we must tell them loud and clear. 
Pretty Patel isn't all that pretty at all because she's quite ugly in the way she's going about her job. She tries to bully her department. She's trying to wipe people and their livelihoods away. We are going to say no more, pretty. We're going to tell Boris, if he's talking about law and order, he should start keeping law and order himself and stop trying to criminalise the whole races of people just because we don't agree with their policies or with their way of doing things. We have a right to do it our way as well. And until we stand up and tell them that and tell them loud and clear, then they will continue to try and divide and conquer. But we Irish, long, long time ago, we realized what they were trying to do. And we had the slogan, united we stand, divided we fall. And let them know that we are united and we will stand and we will stand forever. Thank you very much. Of years, not days, years. Traveling is our culture and in our blood. And you cannot take that out. We don't want to trespass, but there is nowhere for us to go. Councils are letting us down. They are not making sites and stop a place that's available for all culture. Putting gypsies and travellers under this new law is wrong. We should not be under this law. We are an ethnic minority. We are not criminals. I have no criminal record. I don't want a criminal record. Neither do our children or our grandchildren or our generations to come because we will not stop. And now I'm going to try and keep this seriously short because uh, we haven't got a lot of time with the mic battery. <laughs> This bill does nothing to address the needs of our community. It does nothing to address the fact that we die 12 years younger than the rest of the population. It does nothing to address the fact that we've been put into prisons en masse for decades. It does nothing to address the fact that they're criminalizing a form of homelessness. If you want to solve homelessness, provide somewhere for people to fucking live. It's as simple as that. I'll tell you what this bill does do. This bill criminalises the 15 to 20 percent of our community that are still nomadic. These are some of the most vulnerable, most abused families in our country. And we should not be letting them be thrown under the bus. Now, whether you're still nomadic or whether you're still in, in houses, whether you, it doesn't matter where you're living, Gypsies and travellers out there, we need to remember our roots. We need to remember where we came from. And for people out there that aren't from our community, you need to remember that for 99% of human history, being nomadic was the default. It shows the level of discrimination, the level of intolerance and racism against Roma people. So, I would like to ask you to keep a minute of silence in the memory of the Roma man who was killed by the Czech police. And I would invite you, everyone, to keep silent for one minute. So they took a better vote in Parliament. They're not the only ones that can take a vote. They voted to put through the bill. Well, we can take a vote out here. This is a vote of the people. All in favour of a vote of no confidence against this racist government. Put up your hands. Put up your hands. Yes, it's only against. Extremely proud of that fact. I come from a nomadic people and I have travelled all my life. And not just in Britain, not just in the British Isles, but I've travelled around the world many times. But one of my favourite countries where I've stayed, and the country I've stayed the most, was Germany. And when I was in Germany, I used to land on the road because my tribe was Sinti, and I used to find the Sinti in Germany, the Sinti Gypsies. And I used to travel with them. And they told me a story one night, not one night, but the travellers for you times, about how, uh, how it started the World War, and how they come to be persecuted in the way that they were. And this has come from the mouth of the German gypsies. They said it began with the newspapers and the media. It began with an editor called Julius Streicher. It was right hand man. And he pumped out propaganda constantly about the Jews and about the Gypsies to he turned people's hearts against us. And when we managed that, 
just before the war started, they came up with a law. The Nazis, Hitler and the Nazis, uh, created a law just before the war started. And the law was, if any gypsies or travellers pulled up anywhere where they shouldn't be, they would be fined, they would have the caravans and the horses and the vehicles confiscated, or if they didn't do it, they would be put in prison. Sounds a bit familiar. It went from that, eventually it went from that, that they would come, they would put them, they put them in prison. They were sent them into death camps. And when, it went from, when the death camps got full, they would take the horses, take the caravans, take whatever they had of any value, and murder them on the side of the road. And I'm not suggesting a time that this government or any civilised world would do anything like that. But what I'm talking about, the beginning of the ethnic cleansing began with a world like this. And we've got to realise how dangerous these laws can be. And the Greens and the Liberal Democrats all did the same. I'm even hopeful, and I'm even hopeful when we get to the House of Lords, we might have a few Tories joining us. And we might actually be able to vote down part four of the bill. Because that's, that's what we want to do.